Hello, everyone. It is Tuesday. Welcome back to our Time Out Tuesday at 10. Go ahead and grab whatever you need to get comfortable and cozy this Tuesday morning, and we'll be back in about 30 seconds. Hello, everybody. It's Tuesday morning, and I'm joined by my buddy, Adelicia Brienzo. Adelicia, how are you? Great. Doing great. Good. I'm so excited. Any chance I get to hang out with you, I get really, really excited. <laughs> <laughs> So for those of you guys watching who don't know, Adelicia and I were uh, both, we both joined the IRC at the same time. And so we have been like besties for like all things. <laughs> Carly has been my lifesaver for sure. <laughs> it's been so nice to like have a buddy, like, you know, like for like kind of thinking of this through the teacher lens, like when you get hired on at the same time as like a teacher down the hall or even across the building, like you, you're bonded for life. <laughs> like you're like, okay, wait, what do I say to this email? Wait, where, what is this meeting going to be about? Like, so I'm glad <laughs> that I have Adelicia for Same. all of those things. <laughs> Same. <laughs> oh man. So we've got a lot of different things happening at the IRC that we want to make sure that we remind everyone about before we hop into our topic for today. Um, and a really big one is that EmpowerCon is happening. Y'all, it is next week and I cannot believe it. Next week is EmpowerCon. We only have a few spots available and I can't even believe it. Only a few spots available left uh, to register. So I'm going to go ahead and drop uh, the link to register in the comments. So if you are joining us on Facebook or YouTube, that comment will pop up. If you're joining us on Twitter, uh, just search our website. You'll be able to see, uh, but get registered like ASAP because we're about to <laughs> be at capacity for both locations. So very excited for that. Uh, we're going to have such a great time. It's going to be so much fun. Um, and then we've got um, other pieces on our website that we just wanted to point to. We've got uh, two really great pieces. Uh, one is on the science of reading and how it impacts and affects multilingual learners in schools and districts. And then the other piece is about the joy of literacy uh, through Drag Story Hour. So we definitely encourage you to check that out on our website. Uh, both pieces that we all feel very strongly about um, and that we're really excited to share with everybody. It also has uh, both of those pieces have great resources um, to kind of go in a deeper dive and explore on your own or with teammates in your school or district. Um, but for today, we wanted to kind of come together and spend some time talking about communication with Family. So if you're joining us online, we'd love to see uh, your comments, questions, tools, ideas, anything under the sun related to uh, engagement uh, and communication with uh, families. So Adelicia, first, can you share a little bit about your series that you launched uh, last year? Because I think this is a really great place to start. <laughs> Absolutely. This is one of my favorite topics, so I'm super excited to be here. Uh, and yeah, I just talking with so many school districts and as in my own experience working with families uh you know a lot of districts are really having a hard time getting their BPAC started and uh the state you know has recognized this and districts you know talk about it a lot at conferences and when i go in um, and talk to district admin things like that and so uh one of the things i feel really strongly about is that you can't if you don't have a very strong family engagement framework and you haven't built the capacity of your families to engage, it's very hard, right? Like I'm not going to go in and be a school board member without having some sort of orientation right. um, in order to be able to perform that role. So uh, I recognized that and I thought, you know, maybe if I could do some sort of have some sort of platform for families to come in to learn more about what BPACs are, 
um, BPEX being bilingual um, parent advisory uh, committees, and also just how school systems work and how to navigate the school system. Because of course, you know, school was very different even, you know, I, I'm not gonna say how old I am, but even when I was younger, school was very different than what it is for my kids now. My two boys go to school and things are very, very different. The classroom looks different. The way that their school day is structured is very different. A curriculum is very different. Um, and if you are coming from another country, it could be drastically even more different. So it's really important that families know how to navigate that and understand what English language uh, programs could look like and what they're for, what the services are. So, um, so I started doing this virtual series via Zoom because it seems like most families are pretty familiar with Zoom because of thanks to the pandemic, right? Um, and it's the uh, same topic repeated four times because we know that when you are engaging families, flexibility is key, mm -hmm. right? So there are two sessions in English and two sessions in Spanish. Uh, we have had people ask for other languages, um, but we really need to grow first, right? So unfortunately, those are the only two languages that I speak. So that, that's what I'm offering right now. Um, and two are in the day and two are in the evening for uh, parents that, that you know, need that flexibility as well. I love that. So this is really a space for families, right? For families and caregivers so that they can come kind of uh, network a little bit. Maybe they'll, they have specific questions for you, but you're also sharing, right? Different pieces of content just to equip, equip them with ideas and tools and resources so that they can actively engage in their child's school, right? Exactly. And we're, we're calling them meetings, not like workshops. I feel like workshops is a very educator term yeah. um, and they're not workshops. They really are designed to be a safe space for families to come together, to ask questions, to hear each other's experiences and perspectives. Because of course, one family's experience in a school district may be completely different from another family's experience. So to be able to hear, and you know, a lot of, um, you know, my, my mother uh, is, was, a, was an immigrant and, you know, she was so, um, kind of isolated mm -hmm. uh, from, you know, there weren't other Japanese families in the, in the community where we mm -hmm. lived and or anybody that spoke her language. And so there wasn't that like opportunity to like ask other parents, mm -hmm. hey, what, how are things going for you? Or what did you do in this situation? Or, you know, I, I do that all the time. I call my my kids, friends, parents and ask them like, hey, did you get that newsletter? Like, what was yes. that about? Or, you know, yes. so uh, this this offers hopefully that. And again, it's, it's designed to be a safe space. We're not recording them. I get a lot of questions yes. about how to record them. We're not recording them for that reason. I want families to feel a sense of safety and that they can be vulnerable to ask questions. Yes. And I think that's so important too, because like, you know, while, you know, I, I understand the, the desire to catch a recording, um, there's really something to be said about making sure and nurturing that safe space. Uh, so that no one feels like, well, what I say is going to be, you know, viewed later by somebody else who I don't know, or someone in my community who's not here right now, and maybe doesn't understand the context of, you know, this conversation. Uh, so I really appreciate that um, their comfort and their safety is prioritized. I think that's, that's huge. And especially when we're talking about being supportive of our families, we, that that piece is really big. We we can't overlook that. And the relationship piece is yeah. really key. So I really try to make it as casual as possible, as informal as possible. And I have had families help families, which has been just amazing. And um, I've had families come on with their kids. I've had the kids participate, which has been so much fun. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really interesting to hear the kids' perspective on things. I've had... Um, family members come on together. Like I've had um, parents come on together um, and, you know, they can have their cameras on, they can have their cameras off, whatever they're comfortable with. I've had some participants that started with their cameras off, but then gradually, you know, we're feeling a little more comfortable and, and turn them on. I also have families that, you know, are driving home while they're, you know, logged in. So um, definitely uh, I think it's a nice space that families can share, but then I also put in information, of course, and, mm -hmm. We talk about again what 
what is a dual language program? What what does and all the acronyms, right? That that schools use. So what is an IEP? What is EL? What is LEA? What is LEP? You know, what what do all those things mean? Yes. Um, so yes. you know, we it's it's a space that we can kind of discuss things like that as well. Yes, yes. So right now I'm gonna put it in the chat so that anyone who's joining us on uh, Facebook and YouTube, you can check out that link. That'll take you right to the section of our website with like all the information. Um, so I've I've uh, talked to a few folks, and I know that you and I have talked about this, at Alicia. How do people like register for this? Do they have to register for everything in advance, or can they kind of pick and choose what topics? You want to speak to that a little bit? Yes. Again, we really I, I sat down with our communication specialist and our director, and like really tried to make this as easy as possible for families to access because that's the whole point, right? Is the the accessibility of it. So um, they register via Zoom. So there, it's not like teachers that are re registering via CVENT yeah. um, because a lot of families aren't familiar with that. So they're registering via Zoom. There's not a whole lot of questions that they need to answer to register. We do have to ask them like what school district or what community, what zip code they live in just to be able to track, you know, across the state who's coming in mm -hmm. um, as well as if they're a BPAC member or not. But um, there's not a lot of questions they have to answer and they can register even two minutes before the meeting starts so they can register i have some people that register months in advance and they register for all of them that's fine um or like you said they can pick and choose which ones they want to come to um and you know i also have a lot of people that register and then things come up because with families we know that things come up and then they don't come and there's no penalty for that we understand that life is life especially when you're a parent or a family member things come up um, and that's perfectly fine as well. Some people come in late, some people leave early, depending on their schedules. Um, that's okay too. Again, it's just, um, we try to make it as flexible as we possibly can. So they are absolutely welcome to register ahead of time or right then and there. Um, the registration links are not open yet, but they will be open this month. Cool. So our, um, the new series starts next month in August. Great. So August will have the first topic and then September, each month will have a different um, a different kind of focus. Wonderful. So at least I'm thinking about this, like if I am an EL teacher or if I am like, you know, the multilingual coordinator, th this series is a great one for me to be able to share and pass on uh, with all my family. So I'm thinking even like back to school night, like, the, you know, those nights where we bring everyone in and we talk about the school and all of that. This would be a great thing for teachers and directors to just distribute, right? On, on like the, I know we'll have a, a graphic posted pretty soon uh, with all the links and QR codes for them to scan and just register right then and there if they wanted to. Um, but that's a great opportunity and it's free and it's, it's free. So no one has to worry about cost or anything like that. And it's just providing families with another access point to understanding how to navigate, right, the, the American school system and EL programming and all of those things. And like, what does this mean? And what questions should I ask? And all of those things. So um, it's a really powerful series. And I will say to it, and Adelicia, you won't say it, but I'm going to say it for you. Adelicia is the most approachable, knowledgeable, friendliest face on this planet. And people have said, like when they attend these things, when, when they attend these sessions, they say, it's just like asking a friend. And so I have to commend you for that because it's sometimes it's harder to, you know, to build and nurture those relationships online, but like you're killing it <laughs> as always. Um, but I think it, it's just so important to, you know, to give families another avenue to, you know, ask questions, get some content, um, have that space, have that kind of dedicated space that's just for them. Um, so that's amazing. Amazing. So we encourage everyone to check that out. All of the information is on our website and uh, all the registration links will be opening very soon. And I do um, want to mention school okay. staff are also welcome to attend these meetings. They're designed for families. So I really try to prioritize and make sure that it's it's the majority of the participants are family members, but I do have a lot of staff that come in because you know you you want to know what it is that you are sending your families to, and you want to be able to you know in order to really promote it with your families and answer questions, you need to know what that is, right? So 
Um, I'm happy. And I always share the slide decks uh, for those people that come to participate. And teachers, school staff, administrators are welcome to use those slide decks. Like that's what it's for. The whole point is it's called the spread the word series because we want that information to be distributed, right? So you're going to get a copy of the slide deck. So if you want to repeat it at your BPAC meeting or at your open house, whatever, you're welcome to present and use those slides again. That's huge because how many times as a teacher are we like voluntold like, hey, you're going to be leading the BPAC this year or you're going to be leading this And you're like, okay, in addition to everything else I'm doing, like where do I even start? So this would be like just perfection <laughs> yeah. for those teachers who are saying, I don't even know where to begin. Like it's all, it's all done. We it's all done. have so much to do. And unfortunately, a lot of times the family engagement piece gets put on the back burner because we have immediate student needs in our classrooms that need to be met. And so we we have all of the best intentions of supporting families and doing those family workshops and informing families and working with families. But it, it gets hard when when the you know when uh, the fires start you know going in the beginning of the school year. Um, a lot of those intentions again get put on the back burner. So this is just something to just it's already ready it's ready to go and also i've had a lot of districts that invite because some families don't have wi-fi or don't wow. have internet access and can't or maybe not have the technology skills yeah. to um get on to uh, a zoom uh, meeting yeah. so a lot of uh districts lately have been inviting their families in and doing it together so all of their families are in one room watching this at the same time yeah. Uh, and then having discussions afterwards. And some people are, are doing it right before, right after their BPAC meetings. Yes. So they, are, they already have those, those families right there. Yes. Oh, that's great. And I like that, having that as an option too, because again, like once you're bringing everyone together, um, people have this, this misunderstanding because I, I don't, and I don't think we talk about this enough in education. We assume, a lot of people assume that like, if you are a teacher you are like super comfortable as a public speaker because you are speaking all day to a large group. But for many of us, like, hey, we're cool. That Those are our students. But if I have to go in front of like even my staff, my teammates, my colleagues, like other adults or families, like my, my wall goes up. I get very nervous or anxious or uncomfortable. So that is also another great piece to this offering because it kind of reduces that <laughs> that you know that load for um for adults who have that um anxiety or that struggle absolutely <laughs> excuse me my shih tzu decided to join us uh so he is <laughs> down here at my feet uh my great dane luckily is still <laughs> out in the other room He's i wild. close my door because i have my dog <laughs> and my two children that may also <laughs> pop in so See? <laughs> It's it's the balance of all of it, right? <laughs> I love it. I love it. So while we're talking about family communication, if someone is brand new to the role of EL, dual language, uh, bilingual ed, or really any of this, if they're brand new to teaching in general, do you have like certain go-to pieces like tips or tricks or resources that you recommend to to folks first as far as family engagement goes yeah with families um yeah. You know, i think the biggest thing is just getting yourself out there and really showing families again building trust is the most important thing and what can you do to build trust well you have to have a relationship and you have to know these families these families aren't numbers like oh well i you know a lot of school districts talk about like, well, our family engagement numbers are really low. Like, we, you know, we only have like 10% of our families are coming or only, you know, 20 people come, but you have to know those people's names. Yeah. And, you know, even if you just start with a couple, you know, it's almost like I, I like to compare it to your MTSS kind of uh, framework, right? So, you know, you have some families that are going to be fine with just the regular district communication, maybe your monthly newsletter that you do. Um, I have mixed feelings about the monthly newsletter because I think that it takes up a lot of teachers time to put together and all, you know, we, I went through it. We all want to make it cute and we all want to make sure that, you know, the, the wording sounds good and, you know, we're, we're, you know, putting in graphics and making it look, you know, really attractive. But the truth is the amount of time that we spend doing that and then translating it. Yes. Um, 
sometimes we're not getting our bang for our buck because yeah. some a lot of parents aren't reading them. Yes. You know, so thinking about how else you could use that hour of time a month to to engage families, you know, yeah. not just sending them a piece of paper, but figuring out how can I engage families for one hour, whether that's, you know, maybe I should be recording a um, a quick video and yeah. sending that out instead um, via, you know, um, talking points or, or whatever, you know, Seesaw, whatever app you use. Yeah. Um, so really thinking about your time yeah. and thinking about building relationships and looking at which families really need the support and which families are okay. You know, maybe you just need to do a check-in once in a while. Yeah. Um, sometimes during class, I would pull a student and say like, hey, you really did this amazing thing and you worked so hard on this. I am so proud of you and let's call home and talk about it. And it's during school hours. It's not during my planning time. I'm just, you know, if you're lucky enough to have a classroom phone, you know, um, but we're taking a picture like, you know, let's take a picture of you with this uh, and let's send that home in your backpack today. Yes. I love that because I think you, you hit on a few important pieces here. <clears throat> it doesn't have to be time consuming. And, and in fact, it shouldn't be time consuming because we're all super busy, but it's not like one more thing. It really, we really need to kind of alter our mindset and even like alter our structures a little bit for how we view family engagement. It is not one more thing. Like we can build it in seamlessly to what we do within the parameters of the day. So we're not adding on more work. We're not adding on more time. Like I love the idea. I'm, I'm a huge advocate for text um, for like uh, video and um, pictures. They always say picture, like a, an image or a picture is, is worth a thousand words. And it, it's yeah. the truth. It's non-linguistic. And as a parent myself, if I get like eight different newsletters from eight different teachers in a week or in a month, to be completely honest, I don't always read every single piece from every single paragraph, from every single teacher. Um, I don't. But if there is something that is sent home and it's a picture and like it's, you know, everyone's engaged in this work or there's a few different like pieces of like what they're working on. Now, as a, as a family member, I can pull that up on my phone and I can say, what's happening in this picture, right? And now it gives me a window into what they're working on. I feel a little more connected to the school. I get, get like inside the school for just a brief second. Um, and then I have a richer dialogue with my child. So I love images and videos versus like full paragraph <laughs> newsletters. Right. And that's the thing is like, I remember during the pandemic, you know, I have been in the field of education my entire life, yeah. right? And I understand where schools are and, and what's going on. I was so stressed every time my email dinged or my phone dinged because yeah. I only have two children mm -hmm. and they were in they were in two different buildings during COVID and uh, when they when they went back um, and when they were remote as well. Yeah. And you know, they're um, at the time they were receiving speech therapy, their speech therapist was sending them, it was sending me emails yeah. and texts the uh the school principal the superintendent i was getting you know guidelines for remote learning all of the um ideas that the teachers would set up with great intentions of like here's another resource here's another resource but it became so stressful because i'm working a full-time job and I've, i'm getting you know 30 emails a day or texts a day or re, you know uh, remind texts or whatever um, and of course I wasn't reading through all of them. Like, yeah. It just got to a point where I was just like, delete, 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 delete. Yes. Um, and then somebody would be like, oh, did you see this? I, I, I totally missed that email. I, I didn't see it, you know, and I can't even imagine if you are a parent that has financial struggles, um, that, uh, you know, is working two jobs, maybe you're a single parent and you, you know, maybe you have multiple kids, you know, four or five children to navigate that. You know, it can be really stressful. So we, I think we really need to think about how much yeah. more is not better always, you Agreed. know, it's really about the quality versus the quantity of. Media. Yes. More is not better. That is a thousand percent accurate. And I think too, like you hit on this too, when you were, you were sharing about like, you know, during the school day, take, take a selfie with, you know, with the child and send it home or make a quick positive phone call. Some teachers do have um, phone anxiety and I can't judge that. Like I, that's not one anxiety that I have. I have dental anxiety, real, real bad. 
I get, um, I have an Easter bunny phobia. So like, I, I get it. Anxiety comes in all different shapes and sizes. Uh, but many of us do have phone anxiety. And, and so I don't want any teacher to, to watch this and say like, oh, well, you know, positive calls home aren't really my thing. That's okay. Don't, don't, you don't have to have that be your thing. Do a selfie and text or email or whatever, or post it on the seesaw or whatever the app is that, you know, your, your team or your school is using. Look for those different avenues to share good news. Um, there was a period of time, I've got uh, two kids at home. There was a period of time where one of my kids was, um, a little more rambunctious during the day, <laughs> during certain years. Um, and I would get the phone call that was like, Carly, you got to talk to your kid again. Carly, you got to talk to you. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I felt so defeated. I will say I felt so defeated. And then I started to, and I see it now, like in retrospect, looking back, I started to like, if I saw that the phone was ringing and it was that number, I would let it go to voicemail. I would let it go to voicemail because I was like, I don't know what else to say. Like, I am trying. We are having these conversations every single day. I don't know what else to do. And I felt like I was just failing as a, as a parent, as a mom, whatever. And then I would follow it up with, you know, an email like, sorry, I missed your call. <laughs> but if I were to have a little bit of like positivity sprinkled in, like, hey, today was a great day. Keep it up. And a thumbs up emoji. You know what? I, I would have killed for a thumbs up emoji <laughs> like once a week or whenever it happened. I needed that as a as a mom. I needed that encouragement like, OK, something good happened. We're still celebrating all the small things. <laughs> so I think those, those positive exchanges are really important, too. And another thing that um, I did once in a while, some years that were busier than others, I would just get like a postcard or I would print out a whole bunch of like little cards that said like, miss lisa's class or whatever um or you know um you know some sort of um you know congratulations kind of a thing yeah. or star student kind of a thing and um i would let the student write you know like i did this today or i accomplished this today or i really you know my teacher feels that um i you know was super helpful today or whatever it is and then i would just sign it so i mean how long does it take to sign it right and right. you give it you give it to the student you say hey i love that you helped that student today your your partner was really struggling and you were patient and you explained it and you explained it better than i could you know and yeah. so write that down yeah. you know and then i'm going to sign it and let's send that home because that's 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 great you know that's oh, i love hard. that I love that so much because it's putting the student, right? It's like you share your success. You own that accomplishment, right? No matter what it is, how big, how small, whatever, you own it. And I'm going to celebrate with you. And I will say, too, because I know a lot of folks are shopping the Prime Day deals yeah. and all of that stuff. I buy these in bulk. And you, people are going to laugh at me. But I, I talk about this all the time. Blank stationery for the win. Like, keep blank stationary like these are all just colorful cards but this is and then and let me just say this too this is just like a single card it's not even like one that you open so there's less space to fill because sometimes again people will say like well i don't have time to write a whole card for each kid don't write a whole card for each kid just like keep these on hand though because when something great or small or big or whatever happens you have it ready to go and you could just pull it out and then send it home if it's a bright color envelope it won't get lost if it's a white envelope it might get lost <laughs> but the power of snail mail and a smiley face that's huge it goes it goes a long way for both the child and the family member that's it's a nice thing to have on hand and that's you know i would take my class lists um do a mail merge and like excel or whatever yeah. and print out labels i would just have them and i could just grab a label stick it on an envelope you know put it in the in the district office like you know mailbox or whatever yeah. to be sent out and honestly that kind of mail um families really and kids get excited about that too like i got a postcard from my teacher yes and as a as, a, as an adult in today's world i get excited if somebody sends me a letter something in the mail it's not a bill or like a flyer i get pumped so we can only imagine like our kids don't that's not like a part of their life now like getting you know mail from the the postal service. So that is a huge thing. And I love the idea about like, because that's something we could do over the summer. Like if you already have your class list, like that's a great thing to like just print like three 
you know, lab like sets of labels and you're good to go. And then it's also a good way to check who has not gotten, right? Like a, a mail, like a piece of mail from me yet. Uh, and then I could just say like, oh, I really, you know, next week I want to. And the, the other piece too is, as I'll share this, as we're talking about tips and tricks, Take your list, your roster, and just set aside one or two kids each week and put it in your Google calendar, put it in your teacher agenda, whatever. And then like, you know, when you're waiting for a meeting to start or something like that, there are sneaky moments during the day that we can kind of take advantage of and say, I'm just going to write this quick letter. Uh, before we start this meeting um, or this quick note. Um, and that way it's good to go. That way I make sure I hit everybody um, in class and I'm connecting in that type of way with everybody in class. And I would take that a step further, especially you high school folks uh, that are out there that have, you know, 80, 100, 120 kids on your caseload. Um, I would take that step further and think about which families, again, maybe only need two check-ins a year yeah. or one check-in a year and they're good. Yep. Other families might need to check in a week, you know, wow. so I would color code my Ooh. class list too of like, these are the ones I need to like, I need to be a little bit more yep. um, just aware of like what's going on and check in and see if they need some support versus some of the families, like I said, they're, you know, they've, they, and they have other teachers doing the same thing, you know, so it's not like if you have five children in the school system that you need a check in from every single right. one of your five kids teachers yes. every single week. Yes, yes. But I love that so much. I think that's a great way to just consider how we're connecting. Um, and it doesn't have to be anything wild or crazy. It doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be on the phone. It could be, you know, we want to make sure we're adjusting for our preferences and styles, but we're also hitting all the families, various communication styles too, because not everyone uses email. Not everyone's on social media. Not everyone, you know. Um, yeah. So everything is a little bit different. So if we can kind of open open up the box a little bit and think outside the box, I think uh, we're, we're really going to be setting ourselves up for success. I can't believe it is already 1032. Oh my gosh, where did the time go? I could talk about this all day. I know, me too. <laughs> this has been so much fun, Annalise. Yeah, I cannot thank you enough for sharing your expertise and just like talking with you. This has been so delightful. For everyone who was watching, uh, we would love to hear your thoughts and ideas, things that have worked really well for you, any questions you have. Um, and again, make sure you check out uh, on our website all of the information about the Family BPAC information series that is there. Um, and registration links are going to be coming soon. So stay tuned um, and make sure you're following us on social media so you can get the most up-to-date information about when that gets released. Um, and for those of you who are coming to EmpowerCon next week, we will see you guys there. We're really excited. <laughs> Annalisa, thank you so much. It's been great. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Bye, everyone.